Welcome to our brief series on reform. This is a really short unit. So today we're going to do just a brief overview of the Second Great Awakening, the temperance movement, and women's rights. Let's go. Religious reform. So we need to talk about how most of these reform movements actually come out of religion. In the early 1800s, Americans experienced strong religious feelings during what's called the Second Great Awakening. Preachers would set up tents and invite people from all over to hear about how to achieve personal salvation. What can you do to get to heaven? Women in the 1800s did not have a lot of status. They were not seen the same as men, and they were treated differently. Women were supposed to stay at home and not work, and were not allowed to serve on juries. Women could also not vote. In the event of divorce, usually the husband got the children and the property. The women's rights movement aimed to change that. Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Lucretia Mott organized the Seneca Falls Convention in New York State. This was a huge meeting, and it's the first big meeting for women's rights. At the meeting, they write the Declaration of Sentiments, which asked for women to be treated the same as men and to have the right to vote. Out of this came another movement to try to improve the lives of families and women, the temperance movement. Temperance groups spread the word about how dangerous alcohol was. Many believed that consumption of alcohol led to addiction, poor health, being poor, and family problems. So again, those are our first three. The Second Great Awakening is a religious movement. Women had really no status in the early 1800s. And so they formed the Women's Rights Movement and held the Seneca Falls Convention. And then finally, the Temperance Movement aimed to ban alcohol. That is our very brief introduction to the reform.